2 Samuel 7 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Remember, it's the passage where David tells his dear friend and prophet, Nathan, that he wants to build a house for the Lord. Remember what has set up this great passage. David has been made king. Uh, the northern and the southern kingdom or the, the northern and southern tribes have been brought together uh, under David's rule. He has been given peace on all sides from the enemies of Israel, notably the Philistines. And the Ark of the Covenant has been brought into Israel, uh, thus uniting the capital with the place where God is worshiped in Israel. And so it's a very, very significant chapter. And in that context, David is in his cedar palace and he looks over and he realizes that the Ark of the Covenant, this, uh, this um, amazing piece of furniture that represents uh, God's special presence with his people is still in the tabernacle. It's still in the tent that it moved about uh, all, uh, you know, all the way back to the time when Moses created it. And David realizes that he, the king, he's not nearly as important as God. God is far more important than he is, and he shouldn't be in a palace while the Ark of the Covenant is in a tent. And you just think about that. We, you know, we think of the tabernacle, uh, it's, it's a big tent, it's a beautiful tent, it's an elaborately designed tent, it's an expensive tent, but in the end, it's a tent. And uh, David says, I, the, the Ark of the Covenant shouldn't be in a tent while I'm in a palace. And so there's a beautiful play on words in the passage. David says, I'm going to build a house for God because God shouldn't, the, the Ark of the Covenant shouldn't be in a tent when I'm in a house, a palace. So I'm gonna build a house, a temple for God because the, the Ark of the Covenant shouldn't be in a tent when I'm in a house that is a palace. And of course, what happens is God comes to Nathan and says, Nathan, tell David he's not going to build a temple for me, but tell him I'm going to build a house for him. So notice the play on word. David says, I'm gonna build God a house because I'm in a beautiful house. And so the Ark of the Covenant needs to be in a beautiful house. And God says, no, David, you're not going to build me a house. I'm going to build you a house, meaning a dynasty. He's going to give him a kingdom and he's going to give him heirs, descendants that are going to reign on the throne. And uh, the, the speech that God gives to Nathan is deeply moving. He says, let me ask you something, Nathan. When my people were wandering in the wilderness, living in tents, where was I? I was in a tent right with them. And the picture of the presence of God with his people as a pilgrim, as a nomad in a tent is a beautiful picture of the condescension of God. You don't have to wait to the incarnation of Jesus Christ to see the drawing near of God to his people. And it's one of the most beautiful passages in scripture. Well, what happens uh, in, the, in the following section is God speaks a covenant promise to King David. And he promises that he will plant his people in the land and that he will cause David's heirs to reign on the throne forever. Now that's very important because that becomes the great theological crisis of the end of the Old Testament. Because what happens? The children of Israel get exiled so they're no longer in the land and the Davidic line comes to an end. They're carried off into exile and into captivity. And so the people of God say, have God's promises failed? God said we would always be in the land. We're taken in an exile. God said David would always have a king on the throne. There's not a king in David's line on the throne anymore after 400 years of rule. Have God's promises failed? And the whole end of the Old Testament is answering that question. And of course, the great answer to that question is given in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, where a new covenant is prophesied. And don't miss the kingdom talk of the gospels and the way that the gospels bear witness that Jesus is king. He is the Davidic king who will bring to pass the fulfillment of all of God's promises to David. And so 2 Samuel 7 really sets us up 
to understand the person and work of Jesus and the kingdom that he brought better than ever before.